Hey guys, Condover here, and I have my SBR in the T91-ish setup out today. And there's something new on it. It's the upper handguard for the BA Attac handguard set for the T91. This is their MWOC handguard set. It's made out of aluminum with um, steel fasteners. And it is probably, in my opinion, the best handguard option available for the T91 if you want MWOC and you don't want to take a Dremel to your polymer MWOC rail, or you just want more MWOC. It's just, you know, MWOC, MWOC's kind of cool. So uh, you can see the rail is now equal level with the upper, and it is a very, very tight fit. But anyway, let's get into this. I'm going to take this all apart, and then we're going to put it all back together, and that way you can get an idea of how this is put together and what, what to expect with this rail. So anyway, let's get into it. All right, guys, so let's have a closer look at the handguard set. Um, these are milled aluminum. Um, they are, I believe, 6061. I may be incorrect. I know there are different standards between different countries of aluminum quality. Um, that is to say, this is a very nice feeling handguard. I have felt very, um, I have felt many AR-15 handguards that I know are made out of 6061 that did not feel as well, as good as this. And I think a lot of that is in the finish as well as the quality of the milling um, it just seems to be well done. Um, there's a lot of little bits that show kind of like just going above and beyond. Um, one of the major things is using steel inserts, um, instead of, instead of having things thread into aluminum, which I know that some of the, um, some cheaper handguards would thread things into aluminum, especially airsoft grade ones might do that. Um, a lot of them just kind of clamp aluminum using a nut on one side and a screw on the other. You know, and that's fine. All. But having steel inserts, well, there's not a steel insert right here. You can see where that's, that's an aluminum hole. The screw goes through, steel inserts on the other side. Um, anyway, the upper portion is the newer bit that a lot of people haven't seen. The Picatinny rail ends up being even with the upper receiver on the T91. These holes are not M-lock. These are vents. These are actually solid at the front and the rear. Um, just FYI, you're not going to be able to put M-lock at an angle on this, unless you did some modification to this. Um, there's not enough space for the nuts to turn on the other side, which honestly isn't that big of a deal. This is really a high higher end replacement for the tri-rail that you can put, which I think is really cool just as a, you know, as a Taiwanese el issued element or used element of the T91. I think the tri-rail is still cool, but this does end up with a rail that's higher than the upper receiver on the T91. Um, this one ends up being flush with the upper receiver. It's not exactly in alignment all the time. Well, I should say it's not necessarily, you can move your optic from your receiver to your upper handguard and keep a zero, but, um, this one is level with the upper receiver, whereas this one is significantly higher. And if you put like a, if you put some sort of like laser unit on this unit on this, you're going to have to raise your optic behind it in order to not have it obstructing view. Um, whereas this one is going to be just equal equal level if you put a laser unit on the front of your AR and it works with your optic on the receiver. Normally, it would work on the T91 with this. So anyway, going back to the upper portion here, there are these two millimeter screws up front. These are not necessary for removal for installation. Um, they look to just be an element of the design. You can see how it's dovetailed into well, it actually uses the Picatinny up here, which is kind of clever, as a dovetail for this collar bit that goes around um, the top here. Um, I'm not exactly totally certain of the purpose of that because it looks like this is kind of superfluous in that it just kind of end caps this. I think you could probably remove it and it'd just be fine um, because you can see how the ears of the actual bit that attach to the, to the gas block are not part of this little circle bit up top. So I wonder, I wonder if there's something going on there. I wonder if there's an additional thought, um, or if it was just easier to get that kind of rounded off look that they wanted from the original handguard, um, do it that way. But anyway, these are removable. So you could in theory run this without that bit on there. Um, anyway, so this handguard has something kind of interesting in that it doesn't tend to use the rear cup of the um, receiver as much because this handguard uses a pin at the front and then has a cup that holds the back together whereas this handguard 
has the screw at the front, which takes the place of the pin, has screws here for the upper to attach the lower, has this barrel band that goes around the barrel to cinch the, the lower portion onto the barrel, and then has a very tight fit with the barrel nut all the way around here, um, which is, it's a very nice, it's a very, very nice fit. Um, so this one doesn't necessarily need the cup. I talked to Biotech about this, and they basically told me that um, there's pretty much no way that the bureaucracy would let would let any um, unit level decisions be made about removing the cups off of rifles because you might want to put the old handguards back on. So that's why, uh, I mean, you, you can leave the cup on, or if you're doing a really custom build with the T91, you can take it off. But I'll point that out a little bit later. I think I've shown you pretty much everything here. Um, this isn't a dual use rail, by the way. It's just it's just Picatinny. There's no, you can't use that walk through this. Um, but we got some nice markings right there, and matching the markings on the bottom. But anyway, let's get this installed. Let me show you how to install it. All right, so I got the rifle and a mini vise here. I've double checked to make sure we're clear. Yep. Um, basically, what we're gonna do is first off, we need to get the space above the barrel here for the barrel collar, so we're gonna have to pull the piston system. Um, that twist there, twist this, pulls out the front. I've heard some people say that this piston system was too complicated. I think they are wrong. Anyway, lower handguard, pretty simple. It's gonna slide right over the barrel nut. It's gonna be a tight fit. So, we're gonna get it right on there. And what we're gonna wanna do is just get it on a little bit, and now we're gonna put our barrel collar on. Let me show you exactly what I mean by that. The barrel collar has two screw holes. I'll move them back and forth so you can see them. Two screw holes, one on each side, and we basically need to just get the screws started on both sides. So you're gonna use the flat-headed screws. Here's a two and a half millimeter um, Allen key or hex, and you're just gonna wanna get them started. First one's gonna start really easy. The next one, you might need to flex the handguard up a little bit, and then you can usually get it started. And we just want that screw in there. Just a few turns, maybe three, four turns. Um, you want it to be wiggly, but we just want, it's just a lot easier to start those screws while everything is loose. So start the screws, and then we're gonna go into the next portion, which is basically making sure that the handguard is straight. It was canted off to the side a little bit, and we're gonna back it up, just slowly back it up. We're gonna to wanna to make sure our cup here, I've gone a little bit too far, the cup here has a tab on each side. Sorry, my stock keeps keep popping the stock around. It has a tab on each side. We wanna make sure that that's set all the way back so we can ease this handguard back into the cup. Now, this handguard will not go back far enough to cinch the cup up. Um, if you go that far back, you'll be too far back. It looks like we're pretty close on our pin here. You can see our pinhole can adjust this a little bit, a little bit up and down. Looks like we might've gone a little bit far. Yeah, we went a little bit far. So what I'm gonna do is just kind of wiggle, wiggle and pull for it just a little bit. It's a very kind of a tensioned fit onto the barrel nut. And that's looking better. All right, so now that we have that bit relatively in alignment, we're gonna throw on the upper. So the upper bit, Drops right in, get the back in the cup, front snaps right down. This uses the round headed screws. These are two and a half millimeter as well. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna get them started at the back. Just get them in there. Very loose still. We're just, we're just getting threads in. Okay. So now we have all those started. Now the trickiest bit is getting this front pin in alignment. If you're really lucky, everything lined up just fine when you um, got the lower handguard on. Sometimes you can just push it right on through and it'll just keep going. Sometimes you can flex the handguard back and forth a little bit. Just get little pops out of that pin. Eventually you should get to the point where it basically um, you can feel it hit the threads. I'm gonna give it a couple little taps of the dead blow. You do not want to pound on this with a steel hammer or anything. Okay. I felt it bottom out there. Now take our flathead. Felt it bite into the threads right there. Feels really good. And we will get this one tightened up. And I don't know the exact sequence of tightening this thing. 
um, especially with the upper. But what I've done and what I, hasn't caused me any trouble with this setup is that what I do is I tighten the front screw, just snug it up, and then I tighten the barrel band screws on the bottom here. I'll tighten both of those. Just know if you ever feel a ton of resistance without a screw sinking in and being really like deep in its hole, um, back it out. Make sure you're not count. Make sure you're not cross threading it because cross threading is nasty. All right now, I'm going to tighten the side screws, and I'm just kind of snugging these up right now. I'll go back through and give them a little bit more force. But I think the big thing about installing this handguard on a T91 is that you do not want to, you do you basically really want to get all these threads started before you start tightening anything, which is a good rule of thumb when you're assembling anything that's got some tight tolerances to it. You wanna get all the threads in before anything gets cinched down. But especially with this barrel collar, if you don't do that, um, there's a good chance you just won't be able to get it installed. All right, so I'm definitely not using all of this wrench just getting all these cinched down and then we'll double check our forward pin. Still tight, okay. Throw in our gas piston system. Find the hole. All right, there we go. Um, it, it's easier to drop that into the piston hole uh, when the rifle is pointing upright. Anyway, um, so that's basic installation. Um, let me cut back and we'll uh, Go do a little bit of an overview of this thing. All right, guys. So that's the BAO TAC um, handguard installed on a T91 Wolf A1 upper. Honestly, I think this is the best handguard available for T91s right now. If you want the classic T91 look, you know, you can't go wrong with the polymer. But, and if, you know, and the, even the tri rail is just fine. This works. But for a modernized T91, I think this is the way to go. I think it's followed by if you want Picatinny and you don't want any MWOC going on in your rifle, you can go with the um, Airsoft grade rail from T91 Tactical. This is the best built Airsoft rail I've ever seen. Um, obviously, I'd said previously I'd had an Airsoft rail not fit on this before, and then, but obviously everything T91 Tactical will sell you. They'll um, they, they they're gonna try them out and they're gonna fit on T91s. So don't worry about that through them. Um, but going back to BO attack, this is just a really nice handguard. I've been shooting with this works great. Doesn't get too hot. You need to have your expectations set because this is not a free floating handguard to do a free floating handguard on a T91. It's going to take quite a bit of custom work and probably custom barrel nut. Um, so like working with what the T91 system is. This is about as good as you can get with a handguard, and I don't think there's any real problems with it. Um, I did throw a hollow sun optic up on the front of it and shoot using the hollow sun optic through the Eotech uh, and found that zero was, like, it was pretty repeatable. It was just fine. Obviously, if you're pulling it off and on the rifle, um, that might change. But if you keep these things tight, this is there's just no, there's no wobble to this handguard. The only wobble... Is this cup back here because the cup as i said before used to hold the old handguard on is no longer necessary with this it's not under that much tension because this handguard is tensioned itself to the barrel nut and to the gas block and it is a very it's very snug it's very tight but it's also i didn't have to shave anything off this handguard every t91 handguard i've had that wasn't a polymer you know handguard i've had to shave stuff off like even even I sing the praises of the um, the pick, Picatinny rail. I had to shave off here, shave off here, shave off here. And it just, you know, to get a tight fit, they give you too much material so that you have to shave stuff off. This one, it just fits perfect. And I, it's just great. I really like it. Um, once again, I was sent the upper rail by BioTac. Um, they just sent it to me. They said they wanted my opinions on it and they wanted honest opinions. Honest opinions are it's a great addition for the lower, but my other honest opinion is that if you're going to get an upgrade for the front end of your T91, get the lower, and you can still use the polymer upper if you don't care about the Picatinny rail up top. There's nothing really wrong with this polymer upper in my opinion, but it is very nice to have the set here 
and have both of these um, match up. All the milling looks great together. Well, I mean, even the original Palmer had the same lines match up. And, you know, the lines just look great with this one as well. It's just a high quality product. The finish is great. Um, I've had absolutely zero issues with it. It probably lets the barrel and gas system, system breathe a lot better. I would have gotten some thermal footage, and I apologize that I haven't. Um, the range that I usually do for thermal footage is either private, which is inaccessible by snow right now, or a, or a range that um, is also inaccessible by snow <laughs> that allows filming. The other one uh, does not want people to film because somebody was stupid and ruined it for everybody. Anyway, guys, that's, that's all I have on this. I'll let you know how things keep going. Um, I'd really like to do some more testing on zeroing this with a laser and putting force on the barrel. I know that it, since it's not free floated, there's more of a chance of that. But there's also, you got to think about this both ways. You're more chance of changing your point of impact, but probably less of a chance of your, your handguard deflecting off of your barrel when you have a free floated barrel and a really, really long, thin aluminum handguard. You know, you put a laser at the very end of that and suddenly your IR laser is deflecting with your handguard when your barrel isn't. So I don't know, maybe, you know, there's an interesting argument to be had there about potentially even that maybe being a benefit to somebody, but we'll save that for another day. Um, I hope you guys all have a good one and I'll see you later.